back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making this lovely wall pocket here. So it's a hanger with three pockets and I thought I'd put daisies on the front. Well actually two daisies and one sunflower because I swapped the colours around so it looks a little bit like a sunflower. The design is the same and it's so easy to make. I'm using bobbiny cord and it's really lovely and chunky and it's quick to make. Now there's so many things you could use this for. I am thinking of, you know, putting your phone in, keeping your key safe. You could even put this in a bedroom, hairbrush, makeup, all kinds of things, you know, next to the door for masks or your car keys. Also, you know, put your phone in the pocket on a Saturday night, don't look at it kind of thing, you know, hide it away in one of the pockets. I will be having it in my lounge, so I hope you will spot it during a Sunday live. OK, let's get on and start the tutorial. So this is the bobbin cord that I am using. As you can see, I've chosen an array of colours which will allow me to make various combinations of flowers. This bobbin cord is 100% recycled cotton. It is meant for a 6 to 8 millimeter hook because it is a 3 millimeter braided cord. So I have it in the colours laurel, which is the green, mustard, pearl and natural. And I'm using a 7 millimeter hook. So in my local haberdashery, I found this macrame accessories starter pack. And as you can see, there's lots of bits in it, which I will be able to use for quite a few projects, I'm sure. But today I mainly needed the stick for hanging up my wall pocket, of course. So let's get started making the squares. So I'm going to make my slip knot insert my hook and I'm going to chain four. One, two, three and four. And then I'm going to go back to my first chain, go into it and pick up the yarn and slip stitch my circle closed. Then I am going to chain one and I'm going to place 12 single crochets into my circle here. So into the circle, pull up a loop. And I'm going to also try and take with me this end here. Yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. Just scoot them over a bit so they are where they should be. And again, into the circle for the single crochets. You will soon enough get used to working with the chunky yarn. Don't worry. <laughs> there we go. So how many have I got? I've only got six, so I'm going to have to scoot them over. Right, there we go. And we'll do seven, eight, nine... 10 and 11. So that's 11 single crochets done. But I need 12 Vs on the outside of my work. So I'm just going to check 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I have 11. So all I have to do now is do a slip stitch. There we go. So that chain, that first chain counts as a stitch underneath here. And now we are going to pull up the colour, cut it and take it out. OK, so I'm going to work away this end by doing an invisible weaving. So skip this one, go underneath this one with a smaller hook, loop your yarn behind and bring it through. There we go. 
and then really i mean what we're doing is we're mimicking this stitch here so then we go back into the loop where the yarn end came out of and look we have created an invisible weaving so now with the natural we're going to be doing the petals of the daisy so i've made my slip knot insert your hook and we're going to use treble so that means you yarn over twice then we insert under the v you yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so we're going to do four trebles in this first stitch and of course we started with a standing stitch so this is my fourth one so you've done your four trebles you pull up your loop, take out your hook, and you're going to count back four Vs. And in the fourth one, of course, this is your standing stitch. So this one is always a little bit awkward. You're going to go under the V here. There we go, into there. Put your loop back around your hook and bring it through. There we go. And then we do a chain one. Then we are going to continue doing our popcorns all along the middle here. And so that means we are doing four treble crochets in each stitch, pulling up our loop, taking out our hook and counting back four stitches, reinserting your hook and then pulling through the loop through that first stitch then you do a chain one so i have done three trebles so for the fourth one there we go pull up a loop one two three four into this stitch here put your loop back around your hook tighten it pull it through chain one and this is how you're going to go all the way around. So I'm just about to start my last petal. And this is the reason why, of course, in the previous round, we really had to be making sure that we had those 12 Vs. We now need these 12 petals to be able to, in the next round, square up our square. <laughs> so keep counting how many petals you have, how many Vs you've got left over, that you haven't skipped one anywhere, because otherwise you will be in trouble. <laughs> okay, so this is my last petal. Just pulling it through, chain one, and then you go to the first petal, and to be honest, Anywhere where you think it is sensible to go into, sort of on top of here, I think, is where that V lies. It's fine to do your slip stitch in, just to make sure that you have closed your round. There we go. See? I do love the 3D-ness of this. I did do one in the mustard because I thought that would uh, make it look like as if it was a sunflower kind of thing, you know. You know me and my imagination <laughs> okay so now we're cutting off this color here pull it through and again if you wanted to you could do already uh, weave them in but not necessary this time because we are going to be using the spaces in between the petals now so once again we are going to make a slip knot insert your hook and we are going to get started by just choosing an opening yarn over insert pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two 
So we've done a double crochet and we are going to be making a corner here. Corners are made up of three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets. So that is what I am going to be making. Two chains and another three double crochets into that same space here. So that is one corner done. Now you do a chain one, you go to the next location here and we are going to do a single crochet. There we go. Chain one into the next location, single crochet. Chain one and into the next location for another corner. So three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets. Two chains and here we are. Second lot of three double crochets. And the last double crochet. There we go, look. So we've got two corners and a side. And now you continue in the same way. So chain one, single crochet in the next location, chain one, single crochet in the next location, chain one, and you are doing a corner again in this one. And then you continue your round in the same way. So when you've done your last single crochet chain one, we close our round by going over our standing stitch here, going into the V there and making a slip stitch. There we go. So this is the round which I'm calling sort of the leaves in green. So now we're going to finish the square with a last round in purl. So I am doing my slip knot, insert the hook, and we're going to get started in a corner because obviously then we know where we are. <laughs> so yarn over into a corner and you're going to do a corner of three double crochets, two chains and three double crochets. There we go, that's the first lot of three double crochets, then the chains, and then in here for another lot of three double crochets. And there we go. So that's a corner done. And then now here we have three locations, one, two, and three. And in each of those locations, we are going to be placing three double crochets. So just doing the normal granny clusters as we know them. There we go, that's the first one. Then on to the next one. And another one. There we go. So that's a corner done and a side. And now, of course, here we do another corner, then again, the three clusters for the side and so on. So I will see you when you have finished your round. Just doing my last double crochet. Then looking at these stitches here, I'm going to be skipping the first one, going under the V of the next one, and I do a slip stitch, which will lie over that standing stitch there. There we go. So that is the square finished. And of course, you have to make three squares or however many you want in your wall pocket hanger. And now we are ready for the base of the hanger. So 
if you look at your square, you will notice that you have 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 15 stitches plus one each from the corner. So that makes 17 stitches. So the width of your square is 17 stitches. So I'm going to make the width of my hanger also 17 stitches. So let me just put this to the side and let me get you started on the hanger. So I'm going to do the back of the hanger in purl, slip knot, insert your hook, and I'm going to chain 17. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And 17. And now I'm going to come back and put double crochets on there. So for a double crochet or for any turning, I am going to just chain the one. So I chain one, keep my thumb on that 17th, and in that 17th, so skipping the one turning chain, I am going to do a double crochet. go like so now if you want to make sure you don't miss your last stitch of the round put a stitch marker in here okay and work your way all along the row here putting a double crochet into the chain so you yarn over and I insert lower than usual maybe I insert here and not here because if you insert here look this will open up if you insert lower it will not do that so I will see you at the end of the row just doing my last stitch and that one is always a little bit awkward, but it's okay. There we go. Voila. So I have done my 17 double crochets. Now I do a chain, turn, and you do a double crochet in that stitch here where the chain is coming out of as your first double crochet. So this is how you are going to continue for the whole length of the base and I did 39 rows like this. Of course you need to take into account the height of your square and then also a little bit in between for access. So I will be back when I have the length that I need for the base of my wall pockets. So I have now finished making the back panel. I've made it 39 rows. So that means that between every of my pocket, I have one, two, three, four rows free. So you can have easy access to the pockets. So I am now going to make the two loops that I am going to use to put my wooden stick in. So just finished my row and I'm just going to start a new row but this time I am just going to do five stitches so five double crochets so you chain one turn and then one double crochet in the first five stitches and I'm going to be doing that uh, for about a length of that's four hang on a minute <laughs> for about a length of four rows so now I'm going to turn again and then I do my five double crochets Okay, so to get started on the other side, look for what you think is the corner V there. I'm just going to pull through my yarn, making sure there is a long enough end so you can sew that in. Chain one and do a double crochet in that same stitch, just as if you had been turning there basically. Okay. And then here, of course, as well, you do the same thing. So five 
double crochets, four little rows, and then you are going to turn that into a little loop. And I have already done that on the other side. So there we go, look. So I will show you in a moment how to finish this one as well. So I have finished the length of my second loop. This loop here, I actually folded over and slip stitched, which is what I'm going to show you how to do in a moment. And by doing that, it meant that my rod here goes through nicely. So that's what you will need to work out with the stick that you are using, of course, to make sure that it's going to go through. So I am going to do a chain. Then you fold over and you make sure you're at the same side because, of course, now you could say that this is the back because this isn't so neat as this is because this is much neater. So it's up to you, of course. I don't mind either way, but just make sure you do them to the same side, making sure you have your yarn at the back here. Bring your hook into yeah, what you think here is sort of on the side. Okay, and then bring your yarn through and loop it through the loop on your hook and pull it all closed. There we go. So then you go into the V and you go into the next stitch, but making sure that you're at that level where you finish doing the body of this back and you go through the V's there and then you pull it through the loop on your hook. Then, of course, you go into the V into the body and pick up the yarn, bring it through and do a slip stitch into the V, into the next stitch of the body there. This is a bit, you know, fiddly, but you'll soon see how it works and it's the easiest way really to attach this. And like I said, yes, maybe this side isn't so pretty, but let me just do this. There we go. So there we go, I've done my five slip stitches. I'm just going to do another one just to finish it off. But on this side, all you can see is an extra little loop there and I think that's perfect. Okay, so this is our beginning end here. So we'll just pull this into the stitches here. The same with these, this one and this one, just pull them into the stitches there, okay? To uh, sew them in to get them out of the way. So I have now finished my base. I have inserted the stick and it works really well. The holes are perfect. It still moves around and I can easily get it in and out. So that's fine. So I've chosen this to be the back of my work and this to be the front. So now I am ready to attach my pockets. And as I've made two daisies and one sunflower, I'm going to put them on like this. And so you now have to work out where you're going to put your pockets. So I'm going to get started with the one at the base. Then I will leave about, depending on where this ends, when I've attached it, I'll leave about three rows of double crochets, then add the next one again one two three rows and then add the next one and that leaves me with a little bit more at the top which is perfect so the way i'm going to get started to attach this is here in a corner working my way up and then restart again here do this side and then work my way up if you were to start here it's hard to gauge where your work will you know and it might not sort of you know tally up so to attach the pockets to the base i'm going to be using the pearl and i'm going to use a darning needle one of those really big ones with the big hole i don't know whether it will focus there we go and you will be able to get this cord through the hole and that will make it a lot easier to attach your pockets so I have already attached this one here and this one. So now I'm going to attach this one together with you. Here I have just about three width 
in between and then sort of a little bit here so that's okay so here one two three and this is where i am going to be placing my last pocket using the pearl i'm going to cut off a piece that's about the length of what i'm sewing here while i'm bridging here plus a little end to sew in and sort of a little bit more on the other side uh, you don't need that much cord at all then i'm going to put that on my needle there we go and i'm going to get started in the corner now of course i want to sew in my end so i am going to do that right now so i've got an end here so i'm going to start about here and bring in that end really nicely there so i've got my thumb on the location where i need to end up then i'm going to do a loop the loop around this one under that one and you work your way to where i have to be which is as much as possible in the corner of this line here where i'm going to be placing my pocket okay so i am at the corner there i'm going to go under the v in the corner here and i'm just going to pull it tight like so brought the camera a little bit closer so now i'm going to go on to the next v and then here on the side of course you don't have the ready-made v's here you just have a strand that you're going to have to try and pick up sensibly to attach there we go then you go to a next strand and you come out the next V. Into the next V, again, pick a strand that you think will be good. That will be the distance that you want to bridge. And this is how you're going to continue all along the edge here. Not stretching the panel but making sure it's not you know bunched up so making sure it is nice and tight there we go that looks good and as you can see on this side it's not meeting up anymore but that's okay we'll we'll sort that out in a moment of course because we can stretch it a tiny bit to make sure it's doing what we want it to do <laughs> okay so now i'm here near the corner and yeah i'm just looking for strands to use i've come out of that one that one needs to be used so i'm going to make sure that i do a nice corner here so i'm picking a strand a little bit higher just to sort of pull it up a bit and to square it up a bit then i go back to yeah find two strands or just go into the corner seat and just do that again and that has now made a nice let me just yeah a nice corner there pulling it through there look and that is now a lovely corner there okay we have a tiny bit of yarn left so that's what we're going to be using to weave it in so turn over and just use your needle to weave in on the back of your panel here. So now we are going to get started on this corner again, work our way along the base of the pocket and then along the side so once again i'm going to be measuring giving myself a little bit of weaving that one and then a little bit of weaving there so that's enough cord for doing that one put this onto your needle there we go and this time also we are going to get started by weaving in a little bit of our end because again we have to get to this corner here so i'm doing the same thing as before pulling it through to the end there looping it round and 
making sure I end up in the corner <clears throat> where I want to be and you know on the actual side here as well there we go so now I am ready to get started I'm going to go into I mean if if this is the closest to you go in that one as well as in that one so I am going to go under the V there and then bring it into the next V and then down through the base through the stitch then I come up again can you see the stitches lying here so this is what I'm going to use as my guideline for where I'm going to be going in so i'm going to go and come up as well of course here right next to that stitch and then into the v there into the next stitch and then down can you see what i'm trying to do down into between those stitches and pull the way all the way through down to the back of your work and then you come up into the hang on i'm lost it yeah into there is that the right place yep look there and then you look for the v that you have to use next this one there and this is how you're going to continue all along your line here it's a bit awkward because of course you're underneath and certainly when you have to film it you're underneath there we go your work but um you know it, it it's easy because to be honest it gives you the straight line to follow for sewing it on and all you do is go from one v to the next and through that oh this is a, maybe a way, better way to show you there we go see each time just advancing and by following of course these stitches you stay straight and this way you'll slightly stretch the pocket to meet all the stitches along the base here and it will be the right size because of course there should be 17 stitches for you to use go in there out of here i'll go in there which one is the next three there we go see and here as well we're going to try and make a little bit of a nice corner so just go in and come out again pull it tight there we go okay and then here you find a strand on the side and you go into the next V and you just find something on the side to use. Come back up into the next V, down through the next V, strand and so on. And that way you will travel up to the corner at the top as we did on the other side. And of course, once you get here, make sure you end where the other one ended at the same level. And then also try and sort of make it nice and square. There we go. See, pull it a little bit so it looks nice and square. And then, of course, work your way to the back so you can sew in your end. There we go. So turn it over and sew it in. So then I went ahead and attached a piece of cord through the holes of my stick and I hung up my wall pockets. Oh my goodness, I love them so much. They are so practical. They're quite big pockets, so even my headphones fit in them, your phone, crochet hooks, scissors, tape measure, all kinds of things. You could hang it next to your sofa for your remote for the television and things like that or a portable telephone things like that i think they look very very stunning and i just love them 
And here I have my setup in my corner with Ophelia, of course, and the Leila's. One pocket with tissues, my three pockets with all my things in it, like my headphones. And then the green pocket with my phone. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!